Well, good Tuesday morning, everyone. What a week we're having. We're considering the fact that the Bible makes it quite clear, if we'll open our eyes to it, that when God talks about eternal heaven, it's going to be right here on earth. It's not the same earth we know because there'll be no more sin in it. And everything will be, as we read yesterday, all things will be renewed, renewed. And sure enough, we're going to look today at the verses in Revelation chapter 21 that you're probably pretty familiar with because they're often read at memorial services. Why? Because they're so encouraging that heaven's a wonderful place in which to live forever. We're going to look at different passages all week that basically declare and tell us that heaven will be right here on the renewed earth. Now, Revelation chapter 21 is our passage for today. Just to remind ourselves, Revelation 20 is where Satan is bound and cast into the lake of fire forever to not be spreading sin around. He, he has no place in a perfect world. And that is exactly what the earth will be becoming. So right after he's bound, Chapter 21 comes, and it is in order. And the Apostle John writes, from the island of Patmos, he writes, then, after the then is after Satan is bound and cast away into the lake of fire. Then, right after that, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had just passed away. In other words, all that time that Satan had been on the loose and sin had been rampant ever since the Garden of Eden, all that is gone. And it's a new earth. It's a new heaven and a new earth because there's no sin in it. The first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, now the dwelling of God is with men and he will live with them. We'll, we'll get to see God face to face and live with him. For the followers of Jesus, that's an awesome thing. For those who choose not to be and not to live their life with Jesus, it's not such a good thing. Not such a good thing. Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. Verse 4. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Is this good news or what? <laughs> there will be no more death. Of course not. The only reason there's death in this world now is because of sin. Had Adam and Eve not sinned, they would not have died. So there'll be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. It sure has. It sure will, won't it? Wow. And verse 5, he who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. And then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. I'm surprised he added that, these words are trustworthy and true. Why do you think he did, did that? I think he's just reassuring, reassuring us that this great news that heaven will be on earth and the earth will be renewed and it will be perfect and without sin and gorgeous. It's beautiful now in places. Where's your favorite place to go? What do you think is the most beautiful thing you, in nature that you have seen? I don't, I, I mean, I think for me, well, there's so many. I love the ocean. I use it a lot as our background. I love New Zealand when we went there. I love the main, M-A-I-N-E, main coast. I think it's just gorgeous. Well, I feel that same way about 
the Oregon coast, really, and Northern California, even. God's handiwork is just amazing. But you know what? It's going to look, even those areas will be much, much prettier. Because now the sin in no way will have dampened our view of it as it does now. We see it actually through eyes that have sin in our lives. And so in a way, it's like that fog being lifted when we will see the earth in its perfect state at some time in our future. So he, God just wanted to make sure that we, we see this. Now, there's a couple of places that I, I want to comment on on those, on those verses. The first, well, it says, a new heaven, a new earth, because the old or the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the whole. And then he says, verse 2, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem. And that's where the Bible is very clear. That's where we're going to live. That's where our ship of life, that's where our life is ending. We will have, Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us, and it's in the new Jerusalem. So, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. Coming down to where? Well, where was, where was John? He's on earth. And it makes no other sense to have the new Jerusalem coming down to anywhere else, does it? Well, how did it come to earth? Because God is making, he's renewing the earth, making it perfect. Because he doesn't waste creation. The new Jerusalem is coming down to earth. And that's where we will dwell in eternity. By the way, it's it's already in existence, evidently. We can't see it for whatever reason. But he doesn't say that he creates a new Jerusalem. He just says, I saw the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven to earth. To earth. Another place where that's very apparent is in verse 5, where he says, he who is seated on the throne, that is God, said, I am making everything new. I am making everything new. It's going to be just, it's like new. It's like new. Had he have been saying, note, he doesn't say, I make all new things. No, he says, I make all the things that are there. I make everything new. Why? Because this is now a holy time. It's like the Garden of Eden. It's restored to its original state. It's not hindered by the fallen man or sin. Sin affected all of creation. And now, at that future time, he is making everything new. He is not making all new things. Do you see the difference? It's very clear. And the next time you hear this passage read, or you read it yourself, and I encourage you, take and study every one of these passages that we're revealing to you this week. And then rejoice that this land that we love and we have enjoyed our whole life, we're going to get to enjoy in much greater depth and detail and pristine colors than ever before in our eternal state, assuming you are a follower of Jesus Christ, because it's his blood that purifies our sins so that we can live forever with a holy God. This is exciting stuff. I hope that you'll rejoice with us again tomorrow as we look at heaven on earth. God bless. See you tomorrow. Your